guys, I'm Eric Goldman, Managing Editor at Fandom, and welcome to the Comic-Con at Home panel for The 100. I had the pleasure of moderating the first ever panel for The 100 seven years ago, and it is an honor to be able to do this panel as they go into their final episodes. So let's get to it and bring on our panelists. She plays Octavia Blake. Please welcome Marie Abdropoulos. Hey there, Marie. How's it going? It's going great. I've become a professional gardener and I'm getting used to isolation like my character has this season. <laughs> nice. Oh, art for Kate's life. <laughs> right. She plays uh, Raven Reyes. Hello there, Lindsay Morgan. She plays John Murphy. Let's welcome Richard Harmon. Hi. Richard. She plays Eka. Welcome, Tassia Tellis. Hello. Hello there. He plays Jordan Green. Hi there, Shannon Cook. Hey. Hello. Now, he used to play Russell. This time, he's playing Shade Hayda. Things change a lot on the 100. Hello to J.R. Bourne. Hey, guys. And she plays Hope Dioza. <laughs> Welcome, Shelby Flannery. What's up? <laughs> ah. Freshman. And lastly, we have the 100's executive producer and showrunner. Hi there, Jason Rothenberg. Hey, guys. Look at all those beautiful people. Here, how are you, buddy? I'm good, I'm good. Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, there is a lot that we're going to try to pack in here as we talk about the final season of The 100. Uh, Jason, let me start with you. You're wrapping up this heavily serialized show. There's seven years of it. So what were sort of your priorities this season uh, as far as what did you want it to accomplish? What were sort of things you knew you wanted to do knowing this was it? Mm, well, I mean, we definitely started the season wanting to kind of make sure that we didn't leave anything on the field, meaning there were certain unanswered questions over the seasons that uh, we wanted to answer. And since I know people are seeing this after I think the first maybe 10 episodes of air, you already have seen the prequel, so you know that that episode kind of fills in a lot of blanks. Why was the bunker empty when they opened it in season four, just being, you know, one uh, sort of question that I always had that we needed to answer this year. Um, and also, you know, the ending of a story is the moral of that story, and we really wanted to say something uh, with this season, which I think when people do get to the end and see how the story ends, they'll perhaps come to look at the whole uh, series differently. You know, like we were not just saying people are awful and will do anything to uh, protect their loved ones and kill anybody who's taken their stuff, you know, which is unfortunately a big part of human nature. Uh, we're kind of making more of a statement about that without getting into too many details because I don't want to ruin it. You know, look, characters change a lot on 100, as I was mentioning a little bit in the intros, uh, but I feel like no one's changed more than Octavia. Uh, so Marie, for you, you know, this season's interesting because she has this new family dynamic and I feel like maybe she was sort of more centered than we've seen Octavia before. So what's it like for you to play this incarnation of Octavia? It was a pleasure for me to play Octavia again because she's always changing her dynamics every single year. But this year, because, you know, we've seen her become a warrior and she was off the walls a bunch of times and then she was trying to figure out who her family was. And, and this year it was really cool to play a very nurturing, um, self-actualized version of herself because it's something we can all relate to right now. Being in isolation, they're on Skyring. She understands exactly what Bellamy meant all these years just by being in isolation. Because when you're in isolation, you're forced to think about your own stuff. I, I won't swear. Um, <laughs> so, and then of course, then there's Hope, um, lovely Shelby, and um, making this new makeshift family. And um, actually she gets to utilize the tools that Bellamy taught her to parent. So I thought that was a really nice, softer version that we haven't seen before of Octavia. I'm training so I can help you save your brother. <sighs> My brother doesn't even know I'm gone yet. Six years for us is like a blink of an eye where he is. That means we have time for you to make me like you. Now, meanwhile, uh, Raven, uh, she had some some dark stuff to deal with this season. She's She's been this great character as far as like uh, helping them out at the, you know, she, she comes through with a lot of solutions for them. But this season, uh, she had to kind of face a, a gauntlet that a lot of other characters have had to do of making a terrible, terrible choice. Uh, Lindsay, she recently, you had a great scene with Raven and Clark where they kind of talked about this. Where do you think her head's at now uh, going forward? Raven's great in the sense that um, she is so smart, but sometimes 
being so smart, it doesn't always give you the opportunity to learn. And I think we saw in the last seasons, Raven was, you know, Miss Morality and calling everybody out for their, for their, um, for, you know, and judging them and judging people unjustly so because she hadn't been in their situation. So now that she has, and she's had to make these impossible choices that we've seen Bellamy and Clark and Octavia and everyone, everyone of the hundred has really made, Raven gets a real, uh, you know, a taste of the gray as um, one of the yeah. lines, said, the world of gray that Richard said so beautifully. When she had added a the in that line. The what? The, the <laughs> world of gray? Sorry, Jason. I, I, I don't remember uh, Richard's yes, line. <laughs> no, Richard on camera in the episode added a the <laughs> that wasn't in the script is what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. Let him know now. It was great. <laughs> no, I remember, I remember <laughs> messing it up on the day constantly. Constantly. Anyways, this is my question, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, but basically, you know, um, she had that beautiful scene with Clark where I was really happy because it gave her a chance to um, tell Clark, I, I understand you now. And in a new way, I've never been able to before. And I'm sorry. So it's been a big lesson for Raven, mm -hmm. big learning for her. And then meanwhile, we've got Murphy, who he's certainly changed from what we met, but it's been really interesting because even that he has, he's done sort of more heroic things, that self-preservation instinct is always there. There's always kind of this push pull, but it feels like maybe, maybe he's kind of turned, gone to a place where he's more embracing that heroic side. What do you think, Richard? Well, yeah, I think, you know, there's been a lot of wrinkles added this season that I don't think Murphy saw coming, which was, um, kind of the pleasure of playing him this season is him falling ass backwards into a leadership role, which is something that I haven't been able to do with him yet, which I've always kind of been curious is what he would be like, which is obviously first and foremost is reluctant. He's a reluctant leader, undoubtedly. But the others better come back soon because I am getting tired of being the hero. But then as time kind of goes on, I think you kind of see him start to almost care about what happens to these people that he didn't even know at the beginning of the season and these people he's leading. And so that was kind of the pleasure of it. So yeah, I think he has changed in a lot of ways. He's still that same old Murphy down inside. And I think we have to kind of wait and find out as everything's wrapping up to see, you know, where his allegiances to himself and everyone else kind of really lie. Tassia, what can you say about Echo as she moves forward, you know, having having sort of experienced something like this for the first time? Yeah, I mean, I think it definitely re is triggering for her to go through something where she loses the one person she's allowed herself to, you know, really love and open herself up to. Bellamy means everything to her. And she's, you know, a very loyal character. Um, if you're in her family, I mean, the thing with Orlando that was upsetting for her, not only, you know, Hope and Gabriel was that she, 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 you know, loved Orlando as well, but the choice came down to Bellamy or my new friend Orlando, who might ruin this whole big plan of us going to Bardot because of his, you know, former ties and relationships there. Two and a half minutes to spare. It's time to go. No, he knew that girl. Trained her, I'm guessing. How many more people will he know on the other side? <sighs> I have to save Bellamy. And her big challenge this season is figuring out who she is without someone to follow, without, you know, being the right hand to somebody. And that's uh, a scary thing, I think, because Echo is such a, she's such a highly skilled, you know, trained killer. So. We'll see what happens there. And then you make friends with the girls you chuck the girl you chucked off a cliff. It's like the best. We high five a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> we cuddled. Yes, a little spoon. Toss <laughs> really, you know, there were some big changes that happened last minute this season as we started to make the season, and a lot of responsibility fell on Toss to be able to like. Uh, really do more than we've ever asked her to do before and she crushed it like she was just so dialed in from day one i was really proud of you all season toss and so yeah, thank, you. Uh, thank you for that for sure thank you 
I think if you can't bond with the person to push you off the cliff, who can you bond with? Uh, uh, I mean, one of the, the main goes. <laughs> Shannon, uh, you know, we got to know Jordan last season, but I really like this season sort of seeing him on this uh, mission with Clark's group, the uh, planet hopping, and also getting to see him sort of bounce off some different characters. Are you enjoying that? And getting to see what is his uh, dynamic like with these different people? Yeah, it's been very exciting to see how Jordan's going to now align this season um, after coming off of the ship and going through a few things in season five. Um, I've almost sometimes compared him to the journey of the spirit. Like he came from a very balanced environment of love and then has decided to propel himself into a different um, circumstance of, I guess, testing his experience with, you know, more primitive temptations of the flesh, existence of being in a human body, actually being human instead of being in a perfect environment. And he is very idealistic, uh, especially coming from his background and, and wanting to do good like everyone want, want, wants to. But then, you know, when you're actually put to the test, as we've seen with Raven in the last few episodes, um, the decisions are not as easy. So it's interesting for myself as an actor and a person to, to see how I would experience or play Jordan in, 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 in imperfection. Because um, right now he's quite perfect and, and, and untainted. He hasn't hurt anyone yet or anything like that. Um, and he has some parallels with Hope, who I find a very exciting character. They're both outsiders. Um, but being an outsider, you bring a fresh perspective. Um, a different perspective, especially because his baggage is different, his experience is different to what the whole crew has experienced together, um, but also trying to elevate what his parents were and what is his history and his, 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 what, what they were to what he will be as his own man. Um, and, um, you know, there's, after being adjusted, there's now more interesting things to, to explore. That's mm -hmm. still to come. And uh, real spirituality to Shannon as a person and uh, a sort of groundedness to him as an actor. And this season, he's really exploring uh, really what's at the root of the culture in Bardo. You know, like Bardo is training, we now know for this war to end all wars, what may or may not be the last war the human race ever fights. And he thinks that's crap. He doesn't believe it. He doesn't buy it. And he's, uh, you know, he saw something when he was adjusted and it's definitely kind of got him on a journey that, I, that takes us all the way to the finale um, and proves to be, I think, I won't say very much about it, but proves to be pivotal. JR, uh, you are another great example of change on the hundred. You've only been on the show for two years and you've played two completely different characters. Uh, what was it like for you just even coming into season seven and learning hey, uh, you know, Russell's gone. You're going to be playing this completely different character. Has it been interesting for you to see the this incredible transition? Uh, it's <clears throat> beyond interesting and beyond anything that I've, you know, uh, it's one thing to play different characters on different shows, but to do it on the same show, the same sort of family, that that was a brand new experience. And what a, what a gift. It was, it, was a, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun. A You're lot. doing so well this season. Oh my god. It's so fun to watch you. <laughs> so fun to do. Great to watch too. I mean, obviously, like I get to see every take of every performance, you know? And JR gives us choices. And I have to say, like, there are some huge shade hater moments. And he's called me and he said, Am I doing too much? Am I going too far? And my answer has been, I mean, listen, I feel like you have to go for it in order to find it, you know? And so he yeah. definitely, uh, talk about leaving it all on the field. He definitely leaves it all on the field. There's nothing unexplored. I often choose a lesser big version, but maybe on the blooper reel, we'll show some of the <laughs> JD. On, on and off the field, I've seen JR offset, like by his trailer, running his lines and, I just really thrive, like fed off, his, off of your passion, running your lines and, you know, you're breaking down every word and how present you were in every single take and, well, you know, on camera, off camera, uh, alone. I'm spying on you, just like absorb your energy. It was really a thrill to, to work with you, Jay. Mm -hmm. I love try directing him. I for mean, sure. it's... <laughs> yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> you can play with all the gears of the Ferrari. <laughs> 
Shelby, uh, you know, we got a, a glimpse at Hope at the end of last season. But what was it like for you to really kind of jump into this show seven years in? You know, it's the final season, but be very immersed. You know, your, your character is you know, obviously a big part of the season. So was it a kind of just hit the ground running situation? Yeah. I mean, I got super lucky, though. And you see her whole childhood, like, pretty much immediately. Yeah. So I got to, you know, you know, as I write my bio and as I'm getting all this, um, this beautiful, beautiful context of her life made it a lot easier for me. Um, like Jason said, everything kind of shifted right away. So that was also a challenge, but I mean, you know, an amazing acting exercise, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, immerse is what you have to do, right? <laughs> like you have to throw yourself in 100% in order to find, find the magic. Um, and the cast made it a lot easier on me because they're all incredibly accepting and loving as you see, um, so yeah. Shelby, can I just say, Shelby, this was your first job, right, out of um, out of drama school? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so last season, on her first day, it was our last day of shooting, it was the scene where Octavia, where she shows up and stabs Octavia. She's here. Dioza? Hope. I couldn't get out of it. He has my mother. I'm so sorry, Octavia. Octavia! What's happening? Be brave. I tell him it's done. Knife! Oh! No! no. Find me. Octavia! And it was like a 16 or a 17 hour day, which is ridiculous. And everybody was tired and everybody was cranky. And I, I feel like we, I had to apologize to her afterwards because on her first day of work, it was like the biggest show day we've ever had. <laughs> now, scene, we started shooting at like 8 a.m., right? Have, but it did. Uh, better way to get introduced to the 100 though. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All in. All in. But, Anyway, so I didn't really know how good she was going to be. I mean, I thought her auditions were great and she was really good in that scene, but it was like not a real um, good yardstick for what was going to be a very, very crucial role. And I have to say, like, just a, you're such an interesting actor. And I feel like uh, you've it feels like you've been doing this for uh, forever, really. So. Totally. You also saved our assets in just sort of showing up and being able to carry as much material as we gave you this year. So. You made it very easy to love you, pal. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna try. <laughs> Yeah, you, you guys are referencing, obviously, you know, you're, you're on set, things are changing, and, you know, you film episodes out of order anyway. But this season has definitely been interesting to track as far as some of the, uh, not time travel, but, you know, jumping sort of back and forth chronologically, sort of seeing what <laughs> happened. You know, we jump a few weeks back, a few months back. So for, I guess for all the cast, but mostly Marie, Tassia, and Shelby, because it's your characters a lot, has it been a little confusing at times to kind of chart? I mean, the hair course. made it easier. The hair, that's true. <laughs> Whenever I forgot what time zone, I'm like, what do I have on my head? Like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> no. It was that one episode when it was like two time zones parallel. That was a bit confusing, yeah. But... Who wants to answer that one first? <laughs> <laughs> Do you guys all have crazy writing on your trailer wall to try to track it? They actually had a good one in the hair and makeup trailer that I would just yeah. yeah. That was my little cheap cheat. Yeah, it's like it's like when you read the funnies in the morning and then there's the crossword <laughs> puzzle and you can kind of like, okay and then start your day like that. So obviously everyone couldn't be here today, but we have a very special message we'd like to play from a couple of people you are definitely going to recognize. Hi guys, Chuku here. Just wanted to jump on and say, I'm so sorry that I couldn't participate in the panel. I really wish I could have been there. Um, thank you for watching the show. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for getting the show to season seven. Without you guys, this wouldn't be a thing for me. The show wouldn't be a thing. Um, you guys are everything. So thank you. Stay healthy. Stay happy. Sending you love. 
Hey guys, I uh, hope you're enjoying the 100 panel for Comic-Con at home. I know that personally we've both had an amazing time at Comic-Con over the last seven years representing the 100. And it's been great getting to know the fans over the last seven years and seeing you all grow up into fine young adults. Um, hopefully, when it's safe to do so, we'll get to do it again. Absolutely. Uh, be safe out there. Hat. Wear a mask. I've got my hat. Wear a hat. That's optional. Optional. Uh, and may we meet again. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you guys so much for that. I do have a couple fan questions I want to uh, put in here for some folks. And so at Donnie Laterer asked uh, that how the show from the start had no qualms about killing off characters uh, audiences had grown attached to. So he wanted to know, were any of you ever scared that the storyline was leaning that way for your character? Or did you come to peace with that possibility early on that that might be uh, your path on the hundred? You gotta be at peace with it, for yeah, sure. Am I the only one who like had kind of constant fear that I was about to get killed off? Oh, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know I was I, I, was, I was like, every, was every script, yeah. Every script that landed, I was like, it's today. Um, I, I was so hoping, Tassi, you were going to say, was I the only one that never had a fear I was going to get? <laughs> <laughs> like, God, I felt pretty relaxed. <laughs> if, I ever call, if I ever call you guys for anything, is that what you're thinking? Is this that call? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I don't like it's seeing nice. your name on my cell phone. <laughs> I'm like, why is he calling me? <laughs> I know I'm the Honda Civic that just keeps going. <laughs> I see your phone number. I'm like, oof, what did I do now? <laughs> a Honda Civic that just keeps going. That's well, great. they do. They're great on gas. They keep going. They're consistent. Oh, yeah. Those things are They're great. like golden retrievers. <laughs> I just remember season four when Raven was like, losing her brain her brain was deteriorating mm -hmm. people on the crew started saying goodbye to me and <laughs> i was like should i be worried <laughs> like i was, I was so like, mean i'm gonna die soon <laughs> shannon meditated and had a conversation with the universe he knew he was safe so he, uh, yeah <laughs> i made peace with it yeah yeah i thought i died when i got stabbed i wasn't sure but you come into the show and you you know that it's like an ensemble there's such a big story uh so you know, Chris actually, Christopher gave me some advice on keeping that in mind, what the show is actually about. And uh, yeah, you, you're ready to die. I thought, I thought I'd died for, for, for a while, but it's also, it's not personal. Maybe Murphy in season one too. There was so, there were a I few- thought you were, I thought you were gonna kill me. You called me to set two scenes before I had to shoot on my last day of shooting for season one and it was getting stabbed in the leg. And I was what like, did I say to you? this is gonna get really bad. And they're like, uh, Jason wants to talk to you on set. And I was like, oh, is it time to like do the scene? They're like, no, 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 no. He just wants to talk to you. I was like, oh, he's going to kill me. <laughs> well, it was a good run. It was great. I thought you were, you were gonna, like, it's no longer your leg. It's going to go right into your neck. So <laughs> thanks for sticking around for the first season. And then that was the day you told me you wanted me to be a series regular. Aww. Yeah. I cried. It was, uh, it was the opposite. It was the opposite. Yeah. So, I kept watching because I was just dying for Murphy to die before I was on the show. And then I kept watching because I already like Murphy. <laughs> How did that happen? We obviously have said goodbye to uh, a lot of people along the way on the 100. And we actually have another video we're going to show you right now where uh, you might recognize some of these faces. Hey guys, it's me, Sarah Thompson, AKA Josephine Lightborn, my better half. We're doing good. We're up here in, uh, in TV heaven and we're having a blast, but I miss you guys, I have to say. I'm here to say thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for all your love and support, not only for my character, but for me. Some of the things, some of the people that I've met on in this process, I, I have no words. I'm just so grateful that you guys exist. And I, I, I couldn't be happier to be a part of it. And I thank you. Thank you, thank you, and may we meet again. <laughs> hey, it's uh, Sinclair here. Just giving a shout out to all the fans. Thanks for all your support. Well, Sinclair met a, an early demise. At least he got a first name eventually, posthumously. And now, <laughs> may we meet again. One, two, three, grounder! friend.
Yuri's game. That, my friend, is Poison Sumac. Jesus, Finn, thank you. Uh, don't worry, they're not dangerous. They're medicinal. Common, actually. Wait, you have glasses? Nope, 2020 vision. Finn gave them to me, he said I look cool. No. Okay, I gotta know what you two did to get busted. Sumac's not the only herb in the garden, if you know what I mean. Someone forgot to replace what we took. Someone's apologized like a thousand times. Okay, you were saying... Can we eat it? <laughs> Guys, I'm kidding. Go, go. May we meet again. Oh, hey there! You may recognize me from such seasons as 1 through 5 Harper McIntyre. <laughs> what up, San Diego Comic-Con at-home version? I'm Chelsea Reese, sending you love from Vancouver, Canada. I haven't seen you in a while, not since mm, season five. But I've been following along because I'm also genuinely a fan of this show. So thank you, Jason Rothenberg. Thank you, CW Network. Thank you, Warner Brothers, for creating a show that makes me feel empowered, strong, and kick-ass as a female. I didn't know if I could swear that I got quiet on it. <laughs> um, thank you for... Creating such a wild ride that makes me feel like five minutes into watching, I've just hit the treadmill at the gym. Uh, and thank you fans for following along in such a wild journey. Thank you for your support. Uh, your support helped me grow, helped Harper grow, helped her love with Monty grow, which grew into Jasper. And, well, they saved humanity, so, I mean, you're welcome for that. <laughs> thank you everyone involved. This truly has been an experience that uh, I'll never forget. It's a lovely moment in my life, and I hope that it's a memorable one for you, too. May we meet again. <laughs> the 100. Oh, man. Wow. Seven seasons? That's, that's amazing. Um, when I think about the 100, I think about three things. I think about that pilot script and uh, what Jason was able to put together there. It was so fresh. It was so new. It was like nothing I had read in any other pilot season. Um, and I just, as soon as I read it, I knew that it was going to be, you know, extremely successful. And then as my auditioning process started to go along and it looked like I might actually have an opportunity to be on the show, I was really excited because it was just so unique and creative um, and just inspiring. And the second thing I think about is the cast. I mean, I can't name everybody, you know, but just Eliza and and Bob and, and just so many people that I got the chance to spend time with when we were up there shooting and um, they were just such great people, you know, just so, so hardworking, um, just so loving and so caring and just such nice people. Um, Devin, you know, hilarious. Um, and the third thing and the most important thing that I think about and the thing that I always take with me and keep with me the most are the fans. Uh, you guys have been so amazing and so supportive. You know, my run on the show, um, it was it, it was special to me, uh, but it was, I feel like, even more special because you guys kept it alive and you guys made it special and you guys continue to reach out and continue to tell me how much you loved uh, Wells and you loved the character and how much, um, you know, that tone continued throughout the show and uh, had an impact on the rest of the series. And so as an artist, you know, that really makes me happy. So. I love you guys, um, you know, and, and it's been quite a journey. And uh, yeah, all right, take care, all the best. What's up, The 100 fans? It's your favorite character, Charles Pike. Don't try to deny it, we all know, deep down inside, there's love for Pike. <laughs> uh, listen, I just wanna say quickly, thank you to Jason and for the writers for creating what I thought was an invigorating uh, electrifying and layered character. I loved playing Charles Pike. I loved it, I really did. I love the cast, many of you know them. Some of them are very close friends of mine. The crew was awesome. I love Vancouver, very professional up there. I'd work there any time, any time. Um, and I wanna thank you, the fans, for your passionate uh, following of the show. And uh, whichever way you went, you know, we know that 98.999% of you went against Charles Pike. It's okay, I'm an old man, I can take it. Um, I just, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to be a part of such a great show, and I hope you all enjoyed this send-off because it's for you. 
So thank you very much, and you guys take care of yourselves. What's up, what's up? It's your boy Zach McGowan here. You might know me as Roan, or Prince Roan, or King Roan, or one of those. Uh, just sending love to the 100 fandom. Uh, thank you for embracing me uh, as a character and as a person, as a part of the fandom. Uh, it always means so much when you when people uh, you know embrace you for not only your work, but for who you are in reality. So sending so much love your way, uh, right back at you all. And uh, you know, if you ever see me out and about, don't be afraid to, to say what's up. Until then, may we meet again. Hi everyone, this is Nadia or Luna. Um, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such, such outstanding, amazing supportive fans and I miss you all and I hope I'll see you all again. Um, I'm so grateful for you. Uh, you taught me so much and I love you all so freaking much. And thank you guys. May we meet again. Hello fans of the 100. I give you this message and a bit of a melancholy stage. Uh, it's been seven seasons, seven years. And I have to say that uh, the five seasons that I contributed to that show and the portrayal of Jaha was probably one of the most giving and unforgiving challenges that I could have ever had as an artist. Um, it's a wonderful treatise on what human beings can do, the hard decisions that have to be made to survive as humankind. I like to think that we are ahead of the curve in making statements on how we can survive and move forward and do what we do best. And that is to find love, to find the common ground, and to move forward. And uh, we did that. I'm proud of that. And I would just like to say, may we meet again. <laughs> Love you. Thank you all for all the support. Ciao. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's Alicia. Um, we've all gone through a lot with this show. And I'm sad that it's coming to an end. Uh, you know, this was such a hugely important part of my life, of my um, career. And so much of that is because of you guys. You know, we couldn't have done this show without you. Um, you are the most incredible fans. And I feel so honored to be a part of a show that was spearheaded with the most extraordinary, passionate, loyal, loving fans. Um, you know, I think this entire cast, the crew of the 100, uh, has been the most extraordinary family. Um, and they're the most talented, wonderful people. And we have the most talented, wonderful, beautiful fans. And although the show is coming to an end, uh, I think we've all really shared something so special that is going to live on and on for a really long time. Um, yeah, I, I just thank you so much for supporting me and I feel very honored and grateful that I got to play Lexa. And although we went through a big journey with her, uh, you know, she lives on in, in you guys and I'm forever grateful for that. So sending lots of love. Hope you're all staying safe. And may we meet again. Hi. Welcome to Comic-Con 2020. Doesn't get more sci-fi than this, does it? With any journey, let's start at the beginning. Brilliant visionary, Jason Rothenberg. That vision was translated to writers equally as brilliant, who wrote words for an incredible cast who took those words and brought them to life. Here's where you come in. You guys, you were able to hear what we were saying. 
you were able to relate to what we were saying. Biggest part of that, you were heard. We couldn't have done it without you. I was heard, every actor was heard, no matter if it wasn't the same sci-fi vision, we were all heard. We couldn't have done it without you. Everyone knows that. So with complete gratitude and love, I say thank you for hearing me. Thank you for letting my message, Jason Rothenberg's, all of the writers, all of the actors, thank you. We couldn't have done it without you. Brilliant line, hope is everything, truly. Keep your hope. Not may we meet again, we will meet again. So we have another fan question here from Mikey uh, SR99, who asked, did you take anything from set? I know one of you did, <laughs> because we <laughs> saw. <laughs> hmm. Show us. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you, Murphy, and raise you one flame box. Ah. <laughs> so you have the flame box? <laughs> yeah. oh, no. As was the one thing I wanted. Alexa the fell. The one that no one Damn it. I want my sword. This is, this is so Wait. lame, but I took a spoon. I think I have some other stuff. Like a spoon? <laughs> a spoon. Yeah. It, was a, it was a wooden spoon that we ate jellyfish with. It was so cool. It was like handmade. It's a space oh, spoon. First, I want uh, the spoon. The spoon is mine. Uh, Eric, it's funny that that question came up because right before we started, uh, uh, I moved recently here and now, um, you know, I, I've got a yard. And as I'm sort of planning this yard, I, this is from last season, but Josie, who, uh, uh, oh. Josie. This is Josie. One of our wardrobes. She, she, the, 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 the human being on, uh, just you know. But she took Mama. the shot from last season, and that was Russell Prime chilling. And I'm trying to find those chairs, so I'm googling <laughs> Buddhist uh, meditation. I'm, I'm, I'm googling the hundred Russell Prime lounge chair. <laughs> yard. That didn't work either. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wish that I had <laughs> stolen <laughs> those. Yeah. I wish, I wish I had stolen those. <laughs> oh, you know, can one do, of those, man. Those stayed outside the entire season, no matter yeah. what. Yeah, those things are just pure mold at this point. You don't yeah, want. Yeah, they're stinking. Good point. Oh. And you do not. I want took that. home my Raven iconic orange jacket from season Hell one. Hell yeah! Really? And I took my leg brace. Which oh I, wow! Which I want a bronze. <laughs> Your leg brace? Yeah, I want one of my. I'm the only one that got nothing. You Marie, like, gotta get you, you something. <laughs> I did a hundred episodes of the hundred, and all I got was this T-shirt that I made myself. <laughs> I, was not I got, I have Echo oh, jacket, but I also went to get everybody's chair backs. So I have yeah. all of your chair backs. What? I was so regretful for not grabbing that. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> she'll she'll sell them to you each. <laughs> That's so hey, Jason, you. Give me my sword. I'm telling you now, and it's every. There's witnesses now. <laughs> Richard, I never took that fly jacket. That that <laughs> I, don't want. I mean, I could go looking for it. Okay. I'll come with you. I'm really I won't stop you. <laughs> Ass, I think you have enough stuff. It's probably like 12. <laughs> Her emotional support. <laughs> <laughs> so I have a funny question here from uh, Ashmosis1 at Ashmosis1 who asks. Uh, a question where I feel like the answer has to be no, unless you're psychic, but I still kind of want to know your answer, which is judging by your first day, did you think the story would become what it is today? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what was your percent. Can I get a hell no? <laughs> <laughs> not even in my, what? not in my craziest no. Didn't There's know. never been a bigger no that I could give you in my life. No. <laughs> We have another uh, question here from at BTS Comics, who asked, what is your favorite thing to do on set while on break? 
Eat Nutella. 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 is Nutella. answer is eat Nutella. Nutella. I'll let you guys answer for me because we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it takes like scoops of Nutella, <laughs> puts it in the cup. <laughs> now I was a puppy, so I just run back and try and make sure she. I walked her because I was worried she was going to wreck the trailer. I had like these grass patches that I brought in, and I was worried she would do something uh, like pee or poop in the wrong place. But I'd bring like I'd bring like exercise bands and like a sword and things to practice like like of instrument or martial arts or stretch, but I never did it. <laughs> we used to sit in the sun and like chat to Richard. Richard's always outside yeah. and people having a chat and a cigarette. Yeah. yeah. See, that was what I was I was like, I can't really say mine. No one influenced yeah. the kids. Even when Richard was, and I would hug sometimes. Yep. Yeah, I, <laughs> I would hug back. Even when Richard wasn't even if you were working that day, you'd sometimes be I'd just come out to check. Is he yeah. here? Yeah. There he is. <laughs> I was always around. I'm going to go there later today. <laughs> <laughs> and JR, we know you like uh, relaxing in those chairs. Yeah. We, oh, we, had, we, had a, we had a playground on Sanctum. We did, the so swing, I swing, set. swing set. That was my fave, or the hammocks. That was set was cool. spectacular. Sanctum really was. You couldn't, in six season, when, I think we all sort of felt that when we first walked on, it was like, oh, yeah. This yeah. Is cool. So, uh, guys, as we uh, near the end here, I had a couple last uh, group questions. Anyone jump in questions? Uh, first off, which is <laughs> this show obviously has very, uh, you know, loving fans. People have really connected to these characters. What's that been like for you to interact with them and sort of see how much they have uh, connected to these people through the years? Or recently, if you joined the show more recently. It's a whole new world for me. <laughs> yeah, Shelby, how's it been for you? Yeah, that's, that's what I was most, I was like, I want to hear it for you, Shelby, because the, you're the new. I don't, even, yeah, I don't even know what to say. I mean, it's, it's, I thought it would be more overwhel overwhelming than it is, but, um, you know, because you want to be liked, and I just had no idea what it would be like to have this much attention, but it's, it's all positive things, and the fans are so sweet, so I don't, I don't know, it's, it's, it's pretty great. Mm -hmm. There's some, there's something beautiful, but I mean, this ties into where we are in the world right now and what's going on. Yeah, I was going to say that. Yeah, that made it easier for me to kind of. <laughs> yeah, our demographic, I believe, and, and, and it was, you know, is of the younger generation more so, I would say, right? Everybody would agree. Yeah. And they are the ones that, you know, have a lot more figured out than, uh, than, uh, than some others. So it's, it's unbelievably positive. I think we yeah. all agree, right? Unbelievably positive, unbelievably loving. And the amazing thing is they three they see through all the crap that has been written for these characters over the seven years and what it looks like dark and horrifying things to do. But Jason's always beautifully kind of done that yang to the yin, which is the love that's behind it and the struggle and the very mm -hmm. human sort of thing that I think that the the uh, the, the, the the fans of the hundred absolutely relate to and you know yeah. they see it in this world as well that's going on right now you know yeah. i would say that you know myself and the writers we are the lightning rods you know they get all the all the all the love they deserve and we take you know we, we will take the blame for the things that people maybe aren't as happy about sometimes so my twitter feed's not always yeah, right. in love like theirs is <laughs> i will say though that um and you know, it was interesting when we first made it because, especially in season one, because it was kind of like, at least for me, it was my first big like primetime show. And, you know, I didn't really know what it was going to be like or what it was going to look like. And then it came out and we got such this, this really great response, the sense of yeah. we were doing something really new. And, and then, um, and then we started doing like the fan conventions, which is a whole nother world in itself where we actually got to meet people that saw it. And it's crazy because when you're on set and you're in and you're filming, you're kind of in a bubble, like, you know, crew watches you or you have your castmates, you know, everyone knows you and they're seeing what you're making. Like, it's like you're watching the sausage get made. You're not really impressed by the sausage. You're like, eh, this is it. Or like, we're just trying things out and then when you get to meet people that it has impacted their lives in such a way to where they're so passionate about a story and about these characters and um, the people that make them and play it, it really was mind blowing and, and really was um, 
you know, like, wow, my art, Jason's art, all of our art has touched people's lives in significant ways. So it's, it suddenly became more than just like, we're making a TV show. It, it was mm-hmm. more like, we're creating art and this art is, like, I feel like when I portray act, like portray and I act and portray Raven, I give a bit of my heart in that because it's a bit of me in Raven. And when other people can accept that and accept you into their heart, it's a really, it can, it can be a really beautiful thing. So I'm really happy about the positive impact um, the show has made on a lot of people and really empowered a lot of people, especially a lot of young girls out there. So I'm really, I'm really proud of this show and this legacy that The 100 has created and is. Sometimes you get to meet people at uh, the conventions and they tell you their story of how they've dealt with um, the gone through sicknesses or they've found their life partner through being in the fandom together. And then you, know, you get these stories and you have to like walk away because you're suddenly crying and you're supposed to be chatting to everyone more cheerfully and it really it rocks you from it, 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 it's a curveball you also feel a bit weird taking all that love because it's like i didn't write this it's a it's a full show made by many people a big cast a crew that's there day and night um but you try and channel their story or what they're going through or who they are and when you're doing these characters you're channeling that story a piece of you is in there but you're also channeling something outside of yourself above below yourself whatever it may be um but you know fandoms I've gone through different shows like Degrassi, Carmilla, Shadowhunters. They have fandoms and you have, you experience them being there and then them not being there and then them being loving and then them suddenly being very hateful or seeing your cast have all these hateful words and how they, they deal with that. And I admire a lot of the cast seeing how they've dealt and Jason, how they've dealt with the ups and downs of how people respond to things. And that's part of the, the, the courage of jumping into this, this sphere, I guess, is you have to be okay with being judged. You're liked or you're not liked. And, Sometimes we're really liked, but that can suddenly, this fine line between love and hate, suddenly people don't like you a lot. And there's a lot of pressure. Uh, so you just try and just stay in your own zone as to what you're doing and who you are, but it gets confusing. And then suddenly you're humbled by meeting these people at these conventions and you get to touch. That's why it's, I'm glad we're doing this, but it, it is really wonderful to get to connect with people in person. And it feels, just so you know, when we do meet you, we're, we're trying to channel everything, but it's so far as you're trying to get to chat to everyone. And I'm trying to give you, I don't know anything about you. I'm trying to, be, I don't know you, but I'm trying to know you right now. Uh, but it is a special thing for us to, to get to, to chat to everyone. And we would, you know, have, having been on some things that don't have a big support base, it is, the, the show is completely different without the fandom, without the people sharing their relation, their experience, how they connect to the show. You are a huge part of, of, um, of all of this. So I thank you. Thank you. It's been a short run for me, but it's been very inspirational to, to see everyone before, now, and after, you know, to see everyone working and to connect with you all. Well, it's completely synergetic, isn't it? Like you, an actor needs an audience. Um, and going back on what you said about, you know, the fear of not being liked sometimes, it's like that can get in the way. But paradoxically, that's also why, the, why people who watch it fall in love with a character is because they're human. And it's a mirror and they see, oh, they're flawed and I still have an attraction to them for some reason. Um, and there's like a sense of, accepting of of who you are when you see that when you see a life played out that you can you can relate to that's why acting is mm. is like the world's most personal art form in my opinion i think it's also just story like i think we yeah. as humans naturally gravitate to story because it's easier for us to comprehend um our lives like i think we're always trying to understand ourselves more our lives more our world more each other more and when we see stories they inspire us or motivate us or uh resonate with us and you know it's very like shelby was saying it's it's deeply it's deeply personal and you know like i said i'm, I'm very proud of everything we've been able to create over the last seven years Cassie, i think you were going to say something a minute ago <laughs> oh, I mean, I was gonna build on. <laughs> I was just gonna build on the, that kind of synergistic relationship that you that one makes with the audience because it definitely came as a surprise to me. I didn't realize how much inspiration I was gonna receive from the audience and how much love and support and enthusiasm and that together we've done 
a lot of beautiful things, you know, as a collective because of the show. You know, we have Eliza's um, School in Kotao. We have like Sachin's anti-bullying campaign. We have all like Lindsay, um, you do work in mental health and everybody has, you know, something that they're standing uh, for and, and charities and organizations and fans have come up to me and they've, you know, decided to raise money to save um, like pandas in Japan and, and all of these beautiful gifts because there's so much enthusiasm and so much love and so much support uh, behind us from the show. So that's been just a huge, um, part of the joy of being a part of this, this series. Absolutely. I just think equality is so important and I'm just so happy to be proud. And I know all of you and my wonderful castmates that I've had the wonderful opportunity and, and Jason, you as well, and everybody else um, behind the scenes that I've just made this collaboration work to be part of a, div I, a, div a diverse show that's been diverse since day one. So um, I think that's really important and I'm really proud to be a part of a, a part of that team, 100%. And as women too. Guys, we are all out of time, but I wanna thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for everyone watching. The 100, of course, airs on Wednesday nights. We got a few more weeks to find out how it's all gonna end. Very excited to see it. Guys, thank you again for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye guys, I miss you all. I miss you guys. <laughs>